Starting day. Welcome to the coming out of the dark Bible study. I want to thank everyone for coming on tonight to get a portion of God's word. First and foremost, I want to thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross, coming obedient unto death. Give us of our sins, the final sacrifice. It is finished, paid in full on saying that. Thank you, Jesus, Thank for saving us and doing for us what we can never do for ourselves. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm really grateful for that. I'd like to thank the Anchor Recovery Community Center for letting us do our study in their facility. We're really grateful. Our brother Carl did up the cross for us. People have sacrificed their time and came in early tonight to set this up. To greet us at the door tonight, Wayne. One body. Many hearts. Grateful for all the faithful soldiers that sojourn with us on this journey. The prayer ministry in the back, the girls go and pray for everyone. Oh, we are looking for a male figure to lead the men's prayer group. If you feel qualified, that God's called you to do it, please come and see me. We'll get you started. Amen. We got a prayer box, a book over there in the box. If you have any requests, please write them down. We'll be praying for you. Yeah, the Bible tells us to fight a lot of our battles on our knees, right? Amen. Yeah. We're grateful for that part of the ministry. Yes. Very, very important. Mary, thank you for the coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Doreen does the phone lines for us. Yeah. Eric does the YouTube feed. Yeah. 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 Nick's doing the Facebook feed for us. Say it again, one body. Many hearts. There's so many different parts to a ministry that no one person can handle it. That's why God calls a body of believers together yeah. to do the work of the ministry. Yeah. We need each other for this to keep going. Yeah. Um, Brittany's going to come up and sing after. Yeah. Cindy wrote this, uh, did the book up for us. Right. Wow, there's a lot of stuff to do, right? Yeah. Keep this going. Did I miss anything? Did I get everybody? Yeah. Thanks everybody for being here tonight to support this. We are collecting. There's a donation can back there. 2 Corinthians 9 7 clearly states in our Bible, you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly in response to pressure, for the Lord loves a cheerful. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, so give it up cheerfully. Amen. For Jesus. You can't all give God. You'll figure that out. Yep. Right. And it's not just about the money. It's about, you know, giving God your time, your talent, and your treasure. Amen. The most valuable thing you can give somebody is your time. Because you can't ever get that back. You could always earn more money and get that back. When you give somebody your time, Amen. develop a relationship with them, God honors that for sure. Building fund? 9539. Woo! Woo! We're growing, right? We're growing. Amen. So good to see everybody here tonight for sure. It's a little rainy. It's a little nice, nice out there now, though, right? Nice and cool. I'll take this, right? For sure. If you have a cell phone, please put it on vibrate. And we'll get this started with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for allowing us another opportunity to gather together tonight to worship, honor, and glorify you, Lord. Thank you for getting us all here safely, Father. Thank you for bringing us all together as a family, Lord. Thank you for meeting all our needs today, Lord, with your generous provisions to keep us going, Lord. 
Help us never to forsake the assembling of the saints, Lord, so we can grow and gather and learn from each other and comfort each other and encourage each other, Lord. Help us to leave any distractions that the, the devil and the world will try to leave into our minds tonight, to cloud our minds, not to get the message in your word, by your spirit, Lord. And let everything we do tonight be led by your spirit and not our flesh. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. How's everybody doing? All right? Good now. I don't know, right? Now. It's been a long day for me. Hard work, you know. It's a good thing, you know, like that. Yeah, God is working right back. It's a, God, you know, God sends us through all these trials in life, and he's trying to do something in us and through us to change us and ultimately depend on him. You have to understand what all the trials are for. Yeah. To make us like him. Right. And when I run out of John, God says, that's okay, because now I'm going to take over. Yeah. Right? Because he, he takes away everything in our flesh first, so we can't yeah. do it. So we have to depend on him. And now, unfortunately, we have to go through some suffering mm -hmm. in order for us to crucify what's going on inside of us. So we're on First Peter tonight. Does anybody remember where we left off last week? We, um, we ended, we, we left off of First Peter chapter 3, verse 12. Almost. Almost. That's all right. Like I told you before, what you should do while we're studying Peter is to go home and read it for yourself and let God speak to you through the Holy Spirit so you can get a better understanding of it. Chapter 1 talks about called to our salvation. Chapters 2 and 3 is called the submission of our behavior as a testimony for God. And as we go on to chapters 4 and 5, we're called for suffering. Ruthless Christians. Buffeting. First Peter, we understand that Peter walked with the Lord for three years. And along the, in them three years, Peter made a lot of mistakes. He bumbled and stumbled. And, you know, Jesus told him, Satan's going to sift you like wheat. But when you come out of it, you're going to be able to walk. Teach my people. And this is what we're going to have to go through. That's what he does. All right, so before we start there, I, want, I just want to say something about First Peter. Just to get a little heads up. Is anybody suffering today? Yeah. 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 Well, if you really understand God, that's a blessing. Because suffering is part of God's chastening process as far as believers to mold and shape them into the image of his son. So just remember one thing. All the situations and issues that go on in your life today are designed to change you. Each and everything is designed to change you into the image of Christ. So you have to understand when you want to pray things away or things are bothering you, God wants us to understand and accept what's going on in our lives because there's an ultimate purpose in it. Can we understand it fully? Absolutely not. But what the scriptures tell us, that God's at work in us. Each and every day, he's in control of every circumstance in our life. Nothing can happen unless God allows it. And even if he does allow it, he will provide a way of escape so we can bear it. Okay? So you have to bank on their promises. All right. The book of 1 Peter might be titled, The Survival Manual for <laughs> Suffering Saints. It presents God's time-tested strategy for holding up rather than folding up in the midst of difficulties. Okay, we have to understand this whole process. If you want to get in shape physically, we're going to try to bring this down to a, something tangible. Okay, If you want to get in shape physically, there are some helpful steps you can take. What do they tell you to do? Eat properly, that's one thing. Right? Get adequate sleep. You know, a lot of times people think, you know, we need to get adequate rest too. Right. I'm learning on that. 
and take a multivitamin every day. Amen. These are supplements. But in the final analysis of all this, there is no substitute for exercise, okay? There's no substitutes for that. You can get all that stuff in you, but if you don't actually exercise, it's not going to benefit you. Working against some sort of resistance. Does anybody work out exercise? No, that they tell you to work against some resistance. So what? Your muscles will grow. Same thing with our faith life. It has to work against some kind of resistance so our faith will grow. It's, it's the same principle. So a lot of people are not taught right in the Christian in Christianity. Everybody thinks they're going to get blessed and be full with joy all the time. Well, yeah, if you understand that you're going to get blessed and you're full of joy, you can understand that it's going to be testing and trials and temptations along the way. You can understand it, accept it, and be happy in it. No one is part of it. But if you've got a lack of understanding, you don't want to what? Fold up. You want to hold up. Amen. But if you're not properly taught how God works, you're going to what? Fold up. You're going to say, this is crazy. I was doing all right when I was up in the world. Shut up. <laughs> no way. Well, you were because you were running with the devil because he's the God of this world. Now that you came to Jesus, the devil's against you. So now he's yeah. going to what? Create some kind of resistance. Right. Okay. Working against something, the same is true in the Christian life, okay? You understand that? When you go to, when you, you can take all the exercise, go to, go to the gym and look at the machine, and then go look in the mirror, not, never use the machine and say, how come I'm not making any progress? I'm taking vitamins, I'm sleeping good, I'm definitely eating, I don't know how good. But I'm not seeing any result because I'm not exerting any kind of resistance. To let my muscles grow and my body to change. So, what, what, what I bring that to? Well, you can come to Bible study. Okay? Get ready, come to Bible study, learn God's word, and go home, study the Bible, and have a relationship with Jesus. You can go to church and worship. You can fellowship with other believers. But if you never apply any of it that you're learning, you don't grow spiritually. You stay stagnant and in the flesh. Because you're not growing. You're not putting any of it into practice. You get what I'm trying to say? Oh, but I go to Bible. I go to three Bible stories a week. I go to church. I read my Bible. And I read this. And I do that. But how come there's no changes? Because you're not using any of it. You're just hearing it and taking it in. But you're not applying any of it when you go out into the world. So you're not growing spiritually. Although you can fool yourself and say, well, I've been coming to Bible study for years now. I've been reading. I understand all the doctrine. Yeah, you're just a hero. All you do is hear it. Just like, oh, I've been, I, I got a membership for Planet Fitness for three years. <laughs> but I never use any of the machines. <laughs> so you didn't get any benefit out of it. It's the same with the Bible, folks. Yeah. You're not going to get anything out of this unless you apply it. No. Now, proper nourishment from the Word is essential, but so is exercise in God's strength. See, we do it in God's strength, not ours. We can't practice the Christian life in the flesh. It makes us miserable. We can't do it. <laughs> in God's strength, facing and working through trials and difficulties, God, the perfect coach, knows exactly what kind of workout you need in order to turn an area of weakness into an area of Christ's likeness. So he's working on areas of weakness in your life, and you're resisting him instead of just going with what he's doing. Are you resisting God? All of us do. All of us do at times. We resist what God's doing in our lives. Because I'm saved by God's grace and I'm going to heaven so I don't have to do anything. I don't know what Bible you're reading, but believing takes a little bit more than just saying, oh, I believe it. Even the devil believes that. That's right. Belief is like, it, 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 it's something that we come to believe. 
Because in the beginning, I, oh yeah, I say I believe it, but really I don't because I'm not, if I believed it, I would be my life and it would be all over. I would be like Jesus and everything would be done. No, we come to believe it. What did, the, what did the, uh, one of the guys say to Jesus? Jesus, I want to believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. I say I believe it, but my actions are showing me that I really don't. I'm deceiving myself. Because something happens when you become a believer. It's called a transformation. The Holy Spirit comes in and dwells the believer. And something inside of us starts working. Look, all this work is done by the Holy Spirit. The only thing that is going to change you is God's Word. That's the only thing that will transform us. And if, it has, if your faith hasn't changed you, your faith hasn't saved you. Read James. What good is it if you say, I have faith, but don't show it by your works? That's a dead faith. It amounts to nothing. The Bible is from Genesis to Revelation, and people just love staying in certain verses that tell me, oh, God, you know, God's not going to do it. I can do whatever I want to do. And I'm like, I don't know what Bible you're reading. You must be just plucking, taking it out of context. Because the scriptures show his progressive revelation. And 1 Peter is towards the end of the book. Saying, call to maturity and to actually do some action and some works to show that your faith is real. Are you with me so far? Amen. Do we fail? Yes. Stays where His grace and His mercy comes in every day. We know it's a work of the Holy Spirit, nope. but there's still something we have to do. Practice Amen. walking with the Lord. Amen. I'm going to get up in the morning and pray, Lord, I'm going to go to work for Jesus today. Lord, those difficult people that I'm going to face, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm going to show them that you live in me. Yeah. It's a choice I have to make. If not... What good's believing? It's nonsense. It's right. nonsense. Amen. Nonsense. There's so much in Christianity today, it's all nonsense. The Bible tells us a transformation takes place, and you are changed from the inside totally and forever. The apostle Paul, he was called Saul at one time. He didn't go back to Saul anymore. He didn't go throwing stones and holding coats for people to die and get persecuted. No, he started preaching the gospel all the way till he died. He didn't go back. Amen. There was something that happened to him. He changed. Amen. Amen. Abraham, Abram, he became Abraham. Changed. Jacob became Israel. A different person. Through all the trials and testings of life, literally transformed him into somebody God could use. They're all designed to transform. Have you been transformed? Are you still, are you just being informed? The unbelieving world has a lot of information too. They know the scriptures in and out. There's Bible colleges. There's all kinds of stuff. There's classes you can take. that They'll tell you, well, they'll have no more knowledge of the Bible than you do, but they don't even believe in Jesus. Has it tra literally transformed you and changing you? Are you trying to apply the Word of God to your life? Or are you just being casual about it? I don't know. Paul wasn't casual. Peter wasn't casual. None of them were casual. Is there such thing as casual Christianity? Yes. Oh, just claim it and name it. It's all yeah. yours. Go to church, read your Bible, try to be a good person, and everything's going to be okay. I don't know what Bible you're reading or who you're listening to. You've got to be careful of what you listen to. Because 1 Peter talks about the unbelieving world, and when we get into 2 Peter, it talks about apostasy in the church. A bunch of make-believing Christians saying, oh yeah, I go to church, I do all these outward things, but really, I'm an unbeliever, and there's believers all in the world that never step foot in the church that you're going to see in heaven. And there's people that are in the church you ain't going to see up there. And I'm glad, because I can see it. You'll know my people by their fruit. That is by their actions, Jesus said. There's so much casual, oh, 
Don't step on any toes. Look, they're going to heaven. Everything's good. Nonsense. The devil believes in Jesus too. He ain't going. That's right. He didn't change. No, the devil believes in Jesus. He didn't change. He just went back to doing his evil stuff. So you have to ask yourself, am I transformed or am I just informed? A lot of information out there. The website, the Bible. Oh, there's so much information. But is that information transforming me into the image of Jesus Christ like First Peter talks about? Do you start to live a life for God and say, you know what, it's not about me as much anymore. It's about Jesus. What can I do for Him? i got to suffer for His name's sake. I just consider that a joy. That's maturity. Not grumbling and griping about everything that's going on in your life. That's not transformation. That's just you. Because you ain't getting your way. Exactly. Why? Bunch of baby Christians that have been around for years. Complaining about what's going on in their life and saying like what Jesus did wasn't enough. Like you don't know what he's doing. I don't know. My Bible tells me a different story. How about yours? Amen. These people were transformed. And, they had, and you know what transformed them? Suffering. Yes. Amen. So if you're trying to get out of suffering, you will have a lot of information, but you will not be transformed. That's right. So when you're going through suffering, now you can say, wow, God's changing me. Yep. Thank you. That's the truth of the Bible, folks. There's so many things out there for prosperity. Well, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but when I get up in the morning, I'm not feeling too prosperous. <laughs> I gotta go to work, pay the bills, drive in traffic, deal with unruly people and craziness and all these nuts in the world. Then I don't feel prosperous. But one thing I know for sure, I got an inheritance in heaven coming because I'm not gonna prosper down here if I'm walking with Jesus. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be going against the grain of the world. Yes. And it's not going to, I'm not going to prosper here. I'm going to get persecuted here. Yes. Amen. But guess what? When I follow Jesus, I prosper spiritually. Inwardly. And I'm doing what God called me to do. I'm in God's plan. I'm in His will. I'm doing what I'm created to do. And the world doesn't like that. And neither does the devil. And you see what's going on in Christianity today. Everybody's accepting everything. And saying, you know, why don't we just close this book? Because we don't go by these principles anymore. We're in a new age. I'm sorry, but I ain't going for that. God's word never changes. Sin is sin. And God says, turn from sin. And I'm giving you the power to do it. Amen. All right. Now, God the perfect coach knows exactly what kind of workout you need. I like that. So he's working on my weaknesses. So look, whatever's going on in your life right now that you don't like going on, God's working on a weakness in you. Mm -hmm. Not 